Hans Priest tale. The closest possible parallel or source of the story of Nuns Priest's tale is found in the Roman de Renard, a 13th century French collection of satirical fables. The story of Nuns Priest's tale goes like this. Once upon a time, there lived an old widow along with her two daughters in a small sooty cottage near a meadow. The widow led a very simple life. Her meadow was enclosed with a wooden fence. Here she kept a magnificent cock named Chanticleer. He told the hour better than any clock in Abbey Town. He had comb rather than coral, a beak as black as jet, and a body of burnished gold. Moreover, Chanticleer was also blessed with the power of speech. He had seven heads. However, the loveliest of these was the stunning and gracious Bertie Lord, who had taken hold over Chanticleer's heart. One morning, Chanticleer began to grow. Horrified, Bertie Lord asked him what the matter was, and he told her of the terrible dream about an orange hound like beast who meant to kill him while he was in the yard. Bertie Lord called him a coward and chastised him for letting a dream get the better of him, for it was well known that dreams have no meaning. She quoted Cato in support who stated that dreams are meaningless. She urged Chanticleer to take some laxative and prescribed him a diet of worms as a digestive. Chanticleer thanked Pertilote for her advice but maintained that dreams weren't meaningless. He then proceeded to quote from ancient classics in support of his argument. He recited Cicero's story of two friends on a pilgrimage who couldn't find any lodging in a busy town. They were thus forced to part company. While one found room in an inn, the other had to sleep in a farm barn. At night, in the first pilgrim's dream, his friend appeared and said that he was sleeping in an ox's stall and would be murdered at night. The pilgrim ignored the dream and went back to sleep. However, he had the same dream twice and at the third time, his friend appeared and said that he had been murdered for his gold and his body had been tossed in a dung-laden car at the town's western gate. The next day, the pilgrim awoke early and went to the barn in search of his friend. The innkeeper informed the pilgrim that his friend had already left early at dawn. However, when the pilgrim saw an ox stall, he became suspicious and went to the west gate and found his friend's body in a dung cart. He then narrated another story about two men who were to set sail the next day for some distant country. As luck would have it, one of the men dreamt at night that they would drown if they set sail the next day. When the man told his friend about his dream, he laughed it off and dismissed the dream as a delusion. The friend set sail according to the plan and after some distance his ship capsized and he was drowned. John Declare told Bertie Lord that it was thus foolish to disregard the warnings posed by dreams. He proceeded to quote some more authorities in support. He cited the examples of Saint Kenel who foresaw his own murder in a dream. He cited Macrobius's commentary on Scipio's dream to confirm that dreams are indeed forewarnings of future evils. He also reminded Pertinot about the dreams of Joseph and Daniel of the Old Testament, Croesus's king of Lydia and Andromache. The digressions are more interesting than the central story. The dream the discussion about the dream are all introduced with the purpose of reflecting on the age-old war of sexes. Coming back to the story. Sensing that he had been ruled, Chanticleer changes the subject and praises Pertilot's remarkable beauty. He then quotes a Latin phrase which meant, woman is man's whole joy and happiness. He then gallantly struts about the barnyard amidst his seven wives. In the meanwhile, a sly black fox named Don Russell had crept into the yard and was hiding among the cabbage leaves, waiting for the opportune moment to attack Chanticleer. In mock heroic tone, the nun's priest compares Don Russell the fox to such traitors as Iscariot, Ganelon, and Sino. The nun's priest bewails 
that Chanticleer ignored the warnings in his dream. The nun's priest resumed his story of the cock and described how the cock caught Chanticleer. Chanticleer was delightedly watching a butterfly when he suddenly noticed the fox who was hiding there. His natural instinct bade him to flee and raise an alarm, but the fox stopped him by praising his excellent voice. The fox asserted that he was Chanticleer's friend and had only come to hear him sing. He cunningly told Chanticleer that he wanted to see if Chanticleer could surpass the melodious voice of his father's voice. Chanticleer was overcome with the fox's flattery and closing his eyes burst into a song. At that very moment, the fox leapt up and grabbed Chanticleer by the neck and ran into the woods. Chanticleer's wives unleashed a torrent of outcry and lamentation at this tragedy. Bertillot shrieked the loudest of all. The screeching of the hens awoke the widow and her daughters who saw the fox carrying away Chanticleer. Immediately, their cries for help gathered a number of men and women who chased the fox. Even the farm animals joined in the chase. This created a hideous racket and it seemed as if the very skies were falling down. However, there was a reversal of fortune. Chanticleer urged the fox to tell the crowd that it was useless chasing him. The foolish fox was enchanted by this suggestion and when he opened his mouth, Chanticleer broke free and flew to a high perch on a tree. The fox realized that God sends his love, ill luck to those who talk when they should keep quiet, while Chanticleer realizes that fortune doesn't favor those who shut their eyes when they are required to look. Thus, the nun's priest still ends his tale, sorry, the nun's priest ends his tale with a moral. The nun's priest's tale as a mock heroic epic. The nun's priest's tale is primarily a fable and like most fables, it is inherently mock heroic as it assumes an identity between animals and humans. Let us first know what mock heroic epic is. Mock heroic epic takes a trivial event and transforms it into something of great universal importance. It is absolutely humorous because of the comic exaggeration and ridiculous disparity between the manner of writing and the subject matter. Now, what is an epic? An epic is usually a long narrative poem on a serious subject. It is narrated in a formal and elevated style. It is centered on an, on an almost superhuman figure on whose actions depends the fate of an entire nation. The setting of an epic is grand in scale and its action involves superhuman deeds as in Battle of the Trojan War. Now let us see in what ways the nun's priest tale is mock heroic epic. The nun's priest tale is a long narrative poem that employs all the conventional features of the heroic poem. It has as its central character a cock named Chanticleer, the mockery of a hero. He is portrayed in lines 84 to 98 as a great epic hero with comic details. He is given 200 lines in which he tells two dream stories and refers to many famous dreams in scriptures and the classics. The action revolves around Chanticleer's plight. When he is taken away by the fox, the chase that follows includes every animal on the farm, the poor widow and her daughters, as well as all the neighbors. This is similar to the heightened action and language used in great epic pieces. The cry that the woeful hens made is mock heroically described as greater than the cries described in heroic epics like Homer's Iliad and Virgil's Aeneid. The chase itself could be compared to Achilles' chase of Hector in Iliad. The speech of the fox addressed to the cock is highly rhetorical and full of dramatic irony. At the end of the tale, both have learned survival strategies. Coming to the moral of the tale, there are morals to be drawn by the cock, the fox and the priest. The morals are thus, one should keep one's eyes open. One should not succumb to flattery. One should not speak when one ought to keep quiet. For 